How's everyone doing? Today I have five awesome Blu-ray steelbooks right there. And they're all Alliance releases from Canada. And uh, first up is Equilibrium, which is directed by uh, Kurt Wimmer, who, who wrote a bunch of different screenplays, uh, a bunch of different action ones, stuff like that. But this is a uh, kind of a Matrix-style movie, especially with the action sequences and just the feel and vibe of it as well. Uh, it has Christian Bale and Tay Diggs right here. And there's the, the back right there. And it's kind of set in a futuristic society where... Uh, the government kind of controls you and you can't have any emotions, you can't show any emotions, you can't have any works of literature or artwork or anything like that. You take this drug, I believe it's called Prosium, and it basically uh, stops you from having any feelings. So I think it's pretty clear that it's kind of like an analogy for like self-medication, Prozac, Xanax, Valium, all that kind of different stuff that people take and just over-medicating themselves. And also the constraints on societal constraints and governmental constraints as well. Uh, kind of a, an analogy for all of that as well. And it's a nice looking steel book and great action sequences all throughout right there lots of you know sci-fi uh, action going on you know matrix style you know different fight sequences and two discs right there and I like the unique artwork on both of them go ahead and take it out and I appreciate interior artwork as well And this has a scene where a dog is killed, and I just think about all the different movies where dogs are killed. Every time any kind of like a dog or any kind of animal in general is killed in a movie, I kind of feel more empathetic and sad than when a person is killed in the movie. I don't, I don't know, it's just the way it is. Uh, but it makes me think of uh, I Am Legend, that scene with the dog in there. Tragic. Uh, but basically, I thought the concept was very flawed, the whole, you know, you can't show any emotion. I'm like, come on, really? It's, that's a little too much. I know these kinds of uh, futuristic kind of society ones are all kind of you know, kind of pushing the envelope a little bit, just, but this one, the whole no emotions, you can't show any emotions or you'll be taken away, and uh, Christian Bale is one of the lead officers of the government, like, you know, he tries to find people that show emotion or have artwork and stuff like that, and, you know, takes them away, and he suddenly, you know, starts missing his doses of prosium, I believe it is, that's the drug that suppresses your emotions, and he basically tries to overthrow the government, and there you go. Basically, you'll watch it for... very. It's a very stylistic film, and again, the action sequences are a lot like The Matrix. It's the main reasons to watch this. And uh, Christian Bale, I think he's a great actor, so enjoyable to watch in that one. And next up is Pan's Labyrinth. A lot of people consider this a horror movie. I really don't at all. I think it's a dark fantasy movie uh, directed by Guillermo del Toro absolute genius. The Devil's Backbone has become a personal favorite of mine. If you haven't seen Devil's Backbone, highly recommend checking that one out. It's basically a ghost story uh, set around the uh, Spanish Revolutionary War and phenomenal film. And I hope Criterion Collection releases uh, The Devil's Backbone. I would love to see a Criterion Collection release of that. But uh, Pan's Labyrinth right here, just a phenomenally visually stunning movie. Very aesthetically appealing. Phenomenal dark fantasy movie. Just totally creepy. It's like Alice in Wonderland on even more acid. It's just bizarre and trippy. And uh, it's a nice looking steelbook. I don't really care for the banner. Uh, I prefer just, you know, straight up artwork on there, but it does have some interior artwork, which I appreciate. There's the disc artwork. Go ahead and yep, there is some artwork behind there. Very cool. It's like an extra little bonus treat where there you, you take out the disc. I'm usually expecting like just, you know, blackness and uh, there it is. There's actually artwork behind there, so that's a nice treat. But a classic, classic. Oh, so visually stunning and creepy and bizarre. One of the better dark fantasy movies out there. And next up is The Fighter, directed by David Russell, who also directed uh, Three Kings and Silver Linings Playbook. Three Kings is a movie I just absolutely love. Uh, George Clooney, just the whole cast is excellent in that one. Ice Cube, everybody in there is just, of course, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Just a really fun, entertaining movie. And Silver Linings Playbook is one of my favorite movies from uh, 2012. You know, I'm not a huge um, Bradley Cooper fan, but I thought he did a really good job in there. And Jennifer Lawrence, one of my favorite younger uh, female actresses coming up. Can't wait to see more from her in the future. And that movie made me tolerate the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, but And then Robert De Niro was the father in there. But anyways, let me get back to The Fighter. Probably my favorite boxing movie since Raging Bull. Just phenomenal biopic on Mickey Ward, Irish Mickey Ward, and his brother Dickie right there. And uh, Christian Bale won uh, Best Supporting Actor, which rightfully so. Amazing performance for Christian Bale. I think, again, Christian Bale, again, he was in Equilibrium. Uh, tons of great performances. Uh, the Machinist, one of my all-time favorite movies, American Psycho. That role was just made for him. I just couldn't imagine anybody else being in that role. And uh, Melissa Leo won Best Supporting Actress as well. 
Uh, again, I really enjoy Mark Wahlberg as an actor too. He's kind of more of a, you know, he has that that uh, physical presence that he brings to it. Uh, while Christian Bale, he it's kind of like an all-around performance. I don't th necessarily think that Mark Wahlberg is a fantastic actor, but he's enjoyable. He has screen presence, which I feel that way about a lot of you know actors that are considered great actors. You know, I, John Wayne. I'm sorry, John Wayne. I don't think he's a particularly great actor. But he has amazing screen presence. I feel that way about certain other actors as well. I'm not going to go through the list because it's a lengthy list. But I feel that way about Mark Wahlberg. I, I enjoy watching his movies. I like him as an actor. But I don't think he has great range, essentially. But uh, definitely great screen presence. While Christian Bale has great range, great screen presence, great everything. Uh, one of my favorite actors, along with Daniel Day-Lewis. Uh, I'm not going to go through my list of favorite actors. But he's on the, the top, top echelon in my opinion and again my favorite boxing movie since Raging Bull absolutely love this one uh, they're just training and just goes through their trials and tribulations especially with Dickie and the family drama and all the kind of different aspect and you know he's trying to become a, a, a pro boxer and you know all that kind of stuff like that and uh, there's the steel book and I definitely think it you know Melissa Leo and uh, Christian Bale definitely deserved Oscars for their performances right there and I appreciate the unique disc artwork right there again. And I'll go ahead and take the other disc out. And I really appreciate that there's a, you know, interior artwork, but of course there's a artwork behind the discs as well. You don't always see that. Usually if there's interior artwork, it's just on this side right here, and there's nothing behind. But for this one, there is. It's like that extra treat. And I appreciate that, Alliance Films. You've done a great job with these Blu-ray releases, Blu-ray steelbook releases. And I like this one as well. It has like the white border around there. You don't get a ton of white uh, Blu-ray steelbooks these days. Although Japan put out like a whole bunch of different ones. I think the UK did as well. But up until that point, uh, the Fighter was one of the few ones that had a uh, like a white border. And next up is from Dusk Till Dawn, directed by uh, Robert Rodriguez. And uh, this was the first uh, screenplay that anybody paid uh, Quentin Tarantino to write. Uh, Robert Kurtzman uh, paid uh, Quentin Tarantino, I think it was $1,500, so not a ton of money, to write the screenplay from Dusk Till Dawn, which was based on a short story that Robert Kurtzman uh, did. So this is uh, pretty cool. And I love the look of this steelbook. Very sleek. And there's George Clooney right there. And then uh, George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino, the Gecko Brothers, uh, basically, they pull off a heist, and they're trying to hide out, and they go to a Mexico uh, where they're supposed to meet somebody else, and it turns out they go to the Titty Twister Bar, which turns out to be a vampire uh, haven, and they have to shoot their way out and try to survive, and again, you know, Quentin Tarantino has the foot fetish. There's so many of different movies that he's done where it's very obvious, and then in this one, he has the, uh, he drinks, um, uh, I, is it tequila or whiskey? I think it's drinks uh, whiskey is what it was, the bottle. Uh, and he drinks it off of Selma Hayek's foot, and Selma Hayek shoves her foot into his mouth. You know he loved that. I wonder how many takes they did for that. Uh, but I love the heck out of this movie. I actually love all the From Dusk Till Dawn movies. So many people crap on the sequel. I love the sequel. It's a lot of fun. You know, some people, have, I've heard people say it's one of the worst sequels ever. You must be high. You must not have seen a lot of movies if you think that's the worst sequel ever. Because I've seen a lot of movies way worse. A lot of sequels way worse. From Dusk Till Dawn 2, uh, Texas Blood Money, directed by Scott Spiegel. It's just a fun, entertaining one. But this one right here, classic. Great visual effects in this as well. That was one thing that always impressed me about this movie. And I kind of forgot about it. I watched it just recently. The visual effects are stunning. And there's just a lot of fun. And Cheech Marin he plays three different roles in this one. It's a great cast. Uh, Harvey Keitel, George Clooney, Quentin Tarantino, Selma Hayek, Juliette Lewis, uh, Tom Savini with, with the, you know, the gun. That was pretty awesome. And you've got Danny Trejo, which he looks really young in this one as well, and Fred Williamson. And uh, you've got uh, some cameos from Michael Parks and John Saxon. And it's just an excellent cast all around. And again, I love the look of this steel, very sleek and stylish. And they're very aesthetically appealing. And then you got Selma Hayek right there. Oh, and she's so hot. Mwah, spicy. I would totally drink whiskey off her feet as well. There you go. And again, you have the unique disc artwork right there. For both discs. Two discs right there. And there you go. It's a bloody good time. Vampires, great visual effects, lots of shooting and people getting killed. And Quentin Tarantino plays a creepy dude very well. Very convincingly. And he's just out of control in this movie. And it's it's very entertaining. If you like crazy vampire horror movies, I highly recommend checking it out. 
And next up is uh, Darren Aronofsky's The Wrestler. And Darren Aronofsky, my favorite from, film from him, will always be Requiem for a Dream. Classic. I really did uh, enjoy uh, Black Swan as well. Uh, but Mickey Rourke, I, I'm not going to say his acting performance was phenomenal, but his physical performance was definitely, you know, just mind-blowing. His physical performance made this movie, you know, just, it was, he felt so downtrodden as soon as you look at him, but just everything he did with his body, and uh, it, it was just a great performance overall, and Marissa Tomei, mwah, mmm, yummy, yummy. Mickey Rourke plays uh, Randy the Ram Robinson, and he's kind of, you know, a pro wrestler that's, you know, 20 years past his prime, and he's trying to get a big break to get back into and, you know, get a big payday and fight his old, you know, rival from back in the day. I think it was the Ayatollah, and, uh, you know, he, he does a lot of these different uh, wrestling uh, fights that are, you know, in veteran halls and just really, you know, backyard kind of things, but it's inside essentially, but just really, you know, low budget, just anything to get some extra money. He works at a uh, grocery store as well, and there's a scene where he's cutting of the grocery store and, uh, that scene <sighs> love that scene and just you look right there this that shot sums up the movie and it was just an excellent uh, physical performance from Mickey Rourke and it's just a really heartbreaking movie and I think Marissa Tomei plays a dirty old stripper very well uh, but all kidding aside I do think Marissa Tomei uh, was very good in this movie as well and uh, Evan Rachel Wood uh, plays the daughter and the dynamic between uh uh, Mickey Rourke and Evan Rachel Wood as the daughter. That was kind of just really touching. Just kind of pulls your heartstrings as well. I will say though, uh, Canada. I got this from Amazon Canada. Uh, they do not ship their steelbooks very well. Look at that dent right there. Some scratches right there. There are a couple other ones have a couple little dings and marks, but this one really annoys me. Like I could deal with some of the other ones, but that one right there. I don't know if you can really get a good look at it. But there's a dent right there, and there's some little scraping here and here and there some of the paints coming off a little bit there's another dent down there this annoys me um but go ahead and show you the inside and he's estranged from his daughter and he has a bad relationship and all that kind of stuff and just everything's kind of going wrong in his life and this could be the break that saves him kind of thing and he's got health problems and it's a very depressing movie but it's definitely very effective and there you go Again, uh, great physical performance from uh, Mickey Rourke in this one. And if you've seen The Wrestler, definitely let me know what you think of the ending in particular. That's something I, I like to talk about with uh, people who've seen the movie. Let me know your thoughts on what happened at the end and you know how you feel about what, how they portrayed the ending as well. And as always, if you've seen these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. So there were my five Blu-ray steelbooks. And if you've seen these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. Leave me a comment or a video response down below. Hope everyone's doing well. Take care.